Welcome to Bits Be Trippin'. I want to welcome you back for what we think is going to be a great episode, bringing one of the nicest cars we have tested in our studio to date, the Sapphire Toxic R9-280X. This is your host, Carter. Let's get into this. We were real fortunate to snag a few of these gems in mid-December, a few days before the price went up nearly $200. So you're probably wondering, who cares? They're just like any other R9-280X. Well, Sapphire will tell you, well, it's got three fans, it's got 10-phase power management, higher quality components, double-sided black diamond chokes, and long life capacitors, whatever all that means. Additional to that, Sapphire also claims, you know, delivering stable power at higher levels while keeping the temperatures low, in addition to an extreme factory programmable overclocks, and lastly, uh, an ability to choose between UEFI and non-UEFI platforms which really doesn't matter that much on mining now in stock form the core clock comes at 1150 with memory setting of 1600 so we'll dig into some of the configuration settings that we found work best and I'm gonna tell you we pushed this thing all the way up to around 1200 core clock and 1800 on the memory problem was we just didn't get enough hashes out of it now as most of you know the pseudoscience behind trying to find the right settings to get the most out of your card sometimes is challenging such as putting the card all the way up to 1200 and 1600 or 1800 memory clock yielded great gaming performance was not so hot for the for hashing the best settings to date we have found is actually undervolting this card bringing down the vddc down to 1.1 and taking the core clock down to 1070 taking the memory clock down to 1500 so below stock that really locks in a rate around 750 constant hash it's very consistent holds there right around that 1500 just under 1500 mark and works day and night no issues and seem to be the most stable for us pushing the settings higher than that or really bringing the memory up to around that 1800 mark while we did see some peak performance holding around 780 781 we checked in the morning and CG miner had crashed and looking at the logs, it looked like it took it about three or four hours and then just decided to die. The temperature at that time was 84 Celsius, which was more than tolerant enough. It just seemed to be unstable at those rates for long-term hashing. We tried the same rates with various gaming performance just to see uh, is this card unstable at that? No problems at all. Literally went a complete night of playing Battlefield 4 just to see if I could get the cards to hiccup at those rates. 1800 with a 1200 core clock, no problem at all. Now we tried these cards in a couple different rigs. We did an open air box. You've seen us build a couple of them on here. Built a new box, 1050 power supply, open air, ran great. 1500 hash rate, temperatures without any external fan on them held right underneath 80 Celsius. I mean, these cards really cool themselves very well. And mind you, as you see in the video here, we did not have our risers in yet when we had uh, taken the shot of this video. We had built five rigs prior to this, all with risers. It didn't have any more risers to use with these cards. So we just put them together just to see how they would do next to each other. The one piece I regret is that we didn't buy a third version of this card. I would love to see three of these in one rig without risers, just to see if the metal card can maintain itself. We've tried VaporX, we've tried the Gigabyte cards, we've tried a few other setups, both 280X, 290s, even the 270s to see if all of them could handle being right next to each other and that middle card always shuts down because of heat when hashing these cards i believe they won't and uh, we're going to do our damnedest to find another third one and test that theory maybe in another video now we wanted to check the performance both inside of the open air case and then inside of a more traditional newer case uh, we went with the corsair 540 phenomenal case highly recommend it love it now in the traditional case build with this, we wanted to spare no expense with it. I wanted to see how well these two cards together, Crossfire enabled, both could do the gaming and then Crossfire disabled how well they would hash inside of a traditional box. This box contained a new HyperX, SSD drives, two of those bad boys, 240 gig, 16 gigs of the Corsair Ballistex memory. We're talking 1600 megahertz overclockable memory. Now we put an MSI Z87 G45 gaming motherboard in there. Three PCI-X slots, three PCI-X 1X slots, LGA 1150 motherboard. Not too bad, it's been pretty stable for us for most of our rigs that we've built. And since we're already down, going down the line of badassdom, 
we went ahead and threw in a Intel i7 4770K and a water-cooled setup from Coolmaster on sale and figured why not go uh, water-cooled. Now to finalize this beast of a computer, we went ahead and threw that EVGA Supernova 1300 watt G2. Used it in a couple different rigs. Love it, works perfect. Haven't had any issues with them and more than enough juice for these two cards. All right, now in this view here, we're gonna show you the different hash rates with both the case open, closed, and an external fan blowing on it. Here on the left, we got the case open. The fan's just running on the card around 80% and showing some pretty good uh, performance and thermal performance. On the right side, we're showing case closed, fans going on 100% and obviously having a lot hotter um, cards, but still manageable and usable. If you were using this as a casual gamer and then wanted to kind of hedge a little on that and run it as light coin miner or something or uh, feather coin at night. Then finally, we open the case, put a fan on it, and obviously get a lot better performance on the, the cooling situation. Now, I'm really excited to bring these next few episodes to you guys. We're going to step back from the hardware reviews and change it up a bit. Do a episode purely on the configuration of the mining rigs, the various settings that you can change, the thread concurrency, the core clocks, the memory clocks, the voltage, and bring kind of what the meaning of those are. What are the impacts of what you're trying to change there? What's the science behind it? And why do certain settings work more than others? What are the variables when you're working with this? And try to bring some more clarity to that. Additionally to that, we're going to break down kind of some stuff that I've been seeing on the threads about double spending. There's been a lot of people concerned about like Bitcoin double spending and yeah, if there's zero confirmation, of course, you can double spin. That's why there's confirmations. Look behind the science behind that. Pull up the white paper. See if we can animate some cool stuff for you to give you a different perspective on uh, the, how that works. Not just reading something to you, actually animate something for you to explain it. Real excited to bring you that, too. Obviously, the cards are trying to jump out of their box and jump right into our PCs because they want to be hardware reviewed. We'll finish the last few episodes with more hardware reviews for this month. So that should be our next three episodes. Hope you guys stick with us, share us, tweet us, just get our word out there and uh, we'll bring some good content for you. The bits be trippin'. The bits be trippin'.